a very warm good evening to all of you here special evening wishes to dr venkat ramana uh, this week's industry session this week's industry connect session we have dr venkat ramana with us he has over 12 years of manufacturing industry experience and along with this dr venkat ramana also has been a very active researcher in the uh, research and development sector of various uh, premier institutes like phel iit madras hiet and for and this spans for about 9 years before actually moving into the industry sector he is also a very certified six sigma green belt his areas of interests include and is not limited to uh, artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning data science heat transfer validation supply chain optimization and many more he is currently now associated with the ai tech park and is the founder managing director i am professor vandana i work with a uh, jain university in the department of ai ml cs uh, basic sciences i am an assistant professor in english look we look forward to a very interesting session with you sir maybe please um, hand over the session to you please okay thank you professor vandana uh, it's a great uh, pleasure for me to join you people today session as industry connect session okay uh, let's share my screen okay okay thank you oh everyone able to see my screen right yes sir we can okay okay so today's topic is uh, gradient boosting machines okay there is a saying like uh, as i would like to take this is little bit interactive as well as uh, some engagement with the students to give some kind of thing uh, to get them more engaging manner okay so gradient boosting method is uh, better than deep learning there is something saying that how we would like to explore today and let's get started okay so thank you uh, before we start we would like to thank you jain dean to be university and miles education for giving this opportunity and uh, this is a tech park uh, we are located in pinang Penang uh, is also known to be pearl of the Orient and also Silicon Valley of the Southeast Asia Pacific. We are facility to near to the uh, semiconductor industries like uh, Intel and uh, many other uh, semiconductor industries in this uh, location. And I would like to go about two minutes, uh, less than two minutes, our video analytics services to get a glimpse of what we are doing and how this is connected with our AI world. okay any volunteer what's uh, going on just now 
if you cannot uh, unmute yourself, you can type what is the thing we are just now we have watched the movie, right? What is the behind the scenes? Any any volunteer? Students, these are all you are our young blood. I'm looking for at least you can type in the chat window if you can't unmute. I hear that you you guys are already completed some basics of uh, Python programming and uh, introduction to the machine learning and so-called like deep learning and video analytics, all everything is completed, right? Are you still uh, learning? Whatever, at the beginning stage. Any volunteer? Chandu, can you please unmute if you can? Did you manage to watch the video or multitasking? Because nowadays the world gets distracted and also advantage is this guy. Okay, to make it more engaging and all, please pay attention to the another 40 minutes uh, of the show. You will learn something. Correct? Anybody with me? If you are not, if you are with me, just please yes, type sir, in. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So, uh, thank you, Srivani. And what, what is the thing just now we played our video, right? Our uh, yes, sir. separate profile. Yeah, I'm Can not, um, I think I'm not correct, but I'll just try it, sir. No, no, uh, no, 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 nothing is, yeah. It's, yeah. Deadly. it's yeah. like detecting, it, it's like detecting the things where uh, a particular time or the uh, mistake is done so that it should be corrected. And okay. the interval of time, how they manage, it is yes. detecting something. Okay. Wonderful. You have a goodie driver. Goodie driver. Later, you can reach me out through our uh, what's sure, or, or whatever the connection. Okay, great. Any other volunteer? This is our AI world. Okay. This is called video analytics. It is also written here, right? Video analytics behind the scenes, whatever the video captured, the intelligence engine, AI engine is working. It's not normal video capturing itself. So it takes the thing and as a human, it go and uh, understand the video and giving some kind of information. From there, we are creating the applications used to mim mimic the human or minimize the human uh, efforts, okay? Whatever the things you have uh, seen is uh, uh, intruder deduction. Any thief is uh, coming and are going, right? It can immediately alert the system and gives the uh, uh, awareness to the our uh, SMS or calling to the directly to you or something like that. There is a queue management system whereby you can open another counter or uh, you can, uh, based on the thing, you can, uh, prioritize the business class or uh, economy class like that. There are so many things nowadays we can do in this uh, world. All this comes under the video analytics and particularly this is all happening through our advanced AI behind the scenes machine learning and uh, where it is uh, top notch deep learning algorithms are working on it. Do you all agree? If you are agree, please type in the chat window one to make it, you, you people are engaging. Come on, I don't see any chat one, one, two. Yes. Please type one in the chat window so that we can continue. You, you, you guys are uh, on talk, on, uh, on with me, a with me. Yeah, good, 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 good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, so why? Because just now we see video analytics. The pioneer in the video analytics is the technology behind the scenes is deep learning. But why this? Our, today's our agenda is gradient boosting machines or gradient boosting algorithm. Okay. Why? There, there was at the beginning we say we uh, we were we take the question. 
or deep learning uh, gradient boosting uh, algorithm is uh, better than deep learning so we are asking ourselves question why it is better than the deep learning and we will go and investigate this uh, process the misconception here is nowadays is that deep learning is constantly increasing the popularity because it's uh, happening with uh, recognizing the objects and also driving this kind of video analytics or many more applications are building on top of the deep learning however the reality the reality if you see uh, more than 30 years uh, it is all taking the whatever the tabular data even you can go to the kaggle uh, people uh, you you people know kaggle platform right what is kaggle kaggle is the one of the platform for our data science people community where they organize the competitions by the big giant companies like google amazon flipkart uh, those things each uh, they announce some uh, uh, prize money which is somewhere around 10k usd to the 200k usd also there all the data scientists worldwide will be competing to the kind of problems and uh, they will submit their solutions and also the methodology new algorithm new approach and two third of the uh, winning positions is using the uh, uh, gradient descent uh, our G, G, uh, gbm gradient boosting machines okay this is the reality however the real world is many use cases like cancer prediction and predicting the preventive maintenance of the machine and uh, aircraft fault analysis and those things many other use cases all running um, um, through our gbm okay so this is the kind of thing when the data size is increases gbm gbm is outperforming this is the reality two third of the kaggle competition winners are using the gbm okay so okay coming back okay all this gbm is comes under the ensemble methods what is the meaning of ensemble ensemble is assembly of the different models okay is the combination of models to increase the accuracy the data is coming and they take the data to the different models and those different models will be combined and take the uh, prepare the model and take the new data sample to predict and serve the customer so that's the, how this ensemble uh, will work like uh, for example there are a series of k land models uh, m1 to mk with the aim of creating the improvement of the model for the m uh, it takes the combination okay there are two popular mechanisms uh, in the, the ensemble methods one is bagging and boosting our today's current topic is boosting so this boosting can be uh, extended for numerical and also classification also and boosting uh, always tends to greater accuracy but also it uh, uh, risks of overfitting the model over, uh, over the bagging okay so there is a some another analogy how the boosting mechanism is working okay, let's uh, have when you have something right you want to operate your knee okay you go to the doctor and uh, ask him what is the current status of your knee and the doctor may be saying oh okay you need to go for the operation uh, you, you are afraid it's a, co a cost involved as well as the risk also always any operation it is also risk so that you'd go to the different doctor to for a second opinion and uh, go for it the what the other doctor is saying like that uh this is also something like a similar way it, it can go and take the opinions of the thing and combinedly it can take the individual decision making through through the uh, all the individual models here it is e each doctor advises one model so it, at the same time if any new movie coming you you, you miss the first week or something you want to uh, watch the new movie you go and uh, talk to your friends take their uh, feedback of giving this one 
maybe one person is uh, biased to that kind of hero because that hero is he is actually is a role model or he is a fan follower so he may be always saying whatever the he is bad or good also he will say a particular opinion based bias opinion so that to avoid that kind of biases you go to the other person where it is like the few other people also take your combined thing and take your decision to watch the movie or not this is where how that kind of boosting so that the avoiding of that biases and all the things will be there and those things will be avoided and also uh, uh, cumulatively it is building the reducing the residual and preparing to the go to the uh, uh, accurate prediction okay you can take uh, here if based on this current, current situation you go and watch for the four four doctors second opinion and all you take and consider okay out of four uh, three people will say as yes, then go for the, the surgery or whatever you can take your own decision according to the circumstances okay so how it is working so before jumping into the uh this thing right we all know about uh, linear uh, regression right it is a sim sim simple linear regression model line of fit okay there are there, there are the these are the data points this is our if you plot it will come here and uh, this is the e1 and u2 is a typical uh, error so this is also same like that what we are doing in the gbm is also to minimize this error and combiningly a sigma i to n uh, for example these are the n n uh, data points where you can go and collect collect the errors and you try to minimize or optimize the thing uh, so that it will be uh, giving the accurate prediction so that's the gradient bushnu is trying to get the zero value any questions please type one if you do not have any question at least two people okay okay good okay i continue so i i will take with this uh, some simple data set having the age bmi and height as an example to give that kind of intuition how this uh, uh gbm is working and we go before going to the implementation using the python in this simple data set for uh, having the kind of uh, analogy how we have just described so this is uh, uh, dependent variables and this is uh, this is the dependent variable target variable these are independent variables okay so in the first step we will take the average of the target variables and that is itself is the first model meaning that in the first model the model predicts all three points is average of this one okay that is the step one mean of all this one this is a 168 for example 21 age and bmi answer the predicted value is 168 that is the average of the first step that is the first step for this one the next step that uh, even this one is we call as a base model so the next step we will calculate that one this is the target where predicted value and we will this is actually the target the difference between the target to the predicted value is, is our error so that is the pseudo residue okay got it so 171 minus 168 the 68 is the base model that is 3 so likewise The, the before going to the second step are you clear with this step this is very important once you clear this is actually gradient uh, boosting algorithm is a very complicated model to explain if you understand this step half the way done do you with me okay at the first beginning whatever the target variables you are taking the average and calculating the uh, the predicted value is the average value for all the uh, rows values and you will be taking the residues and with that residues you will be forming the another decision tree or another model and the target value this time is not this value 
the residue. Okay. This is the step three. Clear? Now, whatever the earlier we have calculated, the residue is your target. We build again model, whatever the uh, model decision tree or whatever, and we pre uh, prepare again the uh, predicted value from that predicted value. That is the step four. Okay. When we predicted this one, we are getting 3.3 as a as a uh, as a uh, as a predicted value, and if you add this one, uh, if you remove this one from the target value, you will be getting the new predict predicted height is 168. So it is near to the your actual value. 168 is actually the uh, uh, row value, uh, row value, and it is now it is uh, near to this one. Likewise, we are going to reduce this one to the uh, zero. Like we will, we will, we use this one the base model that is the average plus we will take the learning rate. This learning rate is the uh, phenomena we introduce here to add uh, multiply to this residual value before adding to the uh, model so with, with this incrementally it will be taking and it also solves your overfitting overfitting uh, problem so basic summary is it takes the first model it takes the average and calculate the errors and the next model target value is errors you fit the model and with that, you will be again deducting from the target value to that one and adding the all the models and combiningly, you are taking to count for your uh, target value. The principal idea to construct the new base learning model can be uh, maximally corrected with the negative gradient and all the loss functions associated with the whole ensemble. Okay, like this, this error. So. We, we, we go move forward and until you reach that uh, threshold limit or the uh, whatever the iterations, uh, there is no increment in the error progress, then you will stop that uh, early stop uh, decision. Once we go to the implementation, you will be, you will be getting the details. Uh, this is actually takes about two hours to explain all this uh, gradient boosting. These are the steps we follow. Oh, for the normal way, but we all uh, using the psychic plan to solve this one. We will uh, demonstrate you this one in the thing. I will clear. Any questions so far? Sujan? So I'm passing to the Srijan who can walk through with the code with the different uh, screen sharing. Please give us a second. Okay, good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Uh, please yes. answer me. Yes, we okay. can. Yes, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. All right, so uh, let me just share my screen regarding the code. So um, 
today, uh, the code that I will be showing everyone today is the code for how, uh, how to load um, a GBM using scikit-learn in Python and how to train and everything and how to do hyperparameter tuning with it. So I will walk through that code real quick. All right, so um, everyone can see my screen. Yes, so we can see it. Okay, great. Uh, so first of all, um, I am Srijan. So you can just call me Srijan. You don't have to call me so. And after that, so um, I think that's done. Let's continue with uh, this session. So today's session, uh, this session is uh, pretty simple. So we are just going to uh, import our gradient boost al regression algorithm from scikit-learn. Okay, as you can see right here, okay. It is under the ensemble module. So we can just run this cell in Jupyter Notebook and continue. Then after that for today, um, we will be using the Boston dataset. So everyone is familiar with the Boston dataset, no? Okay, it, it contains the house prices and all these other information. So right here, we have a lot of other information. Then we can just use the pandas library to load in the to load in the Boston data into a familiar format that we can use to train our model, right? So just execute it to load. So we can just uh, take a look at it. I'm pretty sure everyone is already familiar with uh, Jupyter Notebook and everything. So to display this, I can just do X. If I do X, it will display the data. Uh, something went wrong. Let me restart the kernel. Okay. Hmm. All right, just a moment. It is loading. Okay, uh, just a sec. Just a moment, there seems to be a problem with my Jupyter node. Yeah, uh, let me, uh, let me just reopen my Jupyter notebook. Okay. I go and open my files. Does this nice? Okay. All right. Sorry for that. Um, it is started now. Let me rerun again. Yeah, it's working now. Okay, I have that, yes, it's working. So this is the first five rows by using the hit function or the hit method, I can get the first five rows of my data, which we can see right here, we have the crime rate, we have the indus, let's check what indus means, proportion of non-retail business per town. So we have all these uh, rows, right? We can just do some pre-processing uh, not pre-processing. We can just um, get the important parameters right here. So uh, let's just, uh, first let's just uh, split this into training and testing data. We have X-train, X-test, Y-train and Y-test. So these two will be used for training and testing. X, as you all know, X will be the, the data that we get and Y are the labels. Then after that, uh, we are just initializing our gradient regressor. So let me just explain what these parameters mean. This right here is our gradient boosting algorithm in a class, okay? And now there will be a lot of parameters. If I just do shift escape, never mind. Okay, there will be a lot of parameters in this. So currently we're just defining three of the parameters, 
very simple. So first of all, we are defining max depth two. Okay, so this, um, since we're just using a small data set of 500 rows, if you're wondering how can I know it's 500, I can just do that. And I will get the, the rows and columns of my data. So that is a very quick way to get the, the dimensions of your data, right? Since it's a very small data set with only 500 rows, we can just use, um, we can just use a depth of two. So now, uh, now this will initialize. So whenever we are doing the gradient boosting method, like uh, Dr. Ram explained in the theory session just now, we will have a, we will have a tree in every iteration. We will have a tree of two, uh, with two, two layers of leaves. So that's what we will get. And then after that, we are also initializing the other parameters and the learning rate, as you all um, learned just now, this would this will be the rate in which the, the iteration shifts. So learning rate is mainly used to, so that it will uh, progress in smaller steps so that our model doesn't overfit. I think in this case, I'm just going to put 0 0.1. Yeah, let's try, let's try 0 0.1 first. Okay, then I can just initialize my regressor. I mean, my, um, my algorithm. Then after that, then after that, I will fit my model by giving it the data and the labels. All right, then we have our predictions. We can just print that out, our R score. Okay, this is our R2 score. Then we can just execute this. So in this cell, uh, we are in this cell, we are getting the yeah, the important variables right here. It seems that RM in this case, in this case, it seems that RM right here is very important. So let's check what RM is all about. Right here. Yep. Right here we have, let's see, RM. Right here, average number of rooms per dwelling. It seems that in this data set that it got the average room of the average number of rooms are is a very big is a very big uh, variable which is influencing our house price. All right, so we can just um, we can just continue. So uh, through all these lines right here, we have feature importance. So through all these calculations, we will be narrowing down everything. And then after that, we by using matplotlib, we're just plotting out the most important variables. And it seems that uh, we can just ignore all the other variables. Okay, right here. So let's just... Um, okay. All right, now to the hyperparameter tuning. Okay, so here, we have um, the, by using the grid search, okay, we are going to use the grid search to tune our hyperparameters. Basically what we are doing here is that we are defining all the parameters that we want to give to our algorithm right here. Okay, so this is our algorithm, gradient boosting regressor, as you can see. And then we are giving our grid search cross-validation, the parameter grid, okay. So this grid is a very simple dictionary that contains the key of our, of our parameter learning rate. And then we can see that we are giving it an array of all the learning rates. In this case, we are defining 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.10, and 0 0.05 and others as well, right here. And estimators is the number of our, of our models. And then after that, we have the max depth, the depth of our decision trees, which is what it's using. Now we can just uh, execute this. Maybe I will turn down the max depth because it may take too long. All right, then I can just run this. Okay, so what it's uh, essentially what it's doing is, okay, so first of all, in this regressor, it's just going to pass in all these parameters to the regressor. So in the first iteration, it's going to take 0 
Okay, it seems that we have the results. And then it's going to take the n estimators and the max depth. And then after that, it's going to test it, test the thing out again. In this case, it's going to give 0 0.15 and 150 and two. Now it's going to test test each case like that. That's what grid search CV does. Now here we have our best scores. Okay, we are just displaying right here. And the last line, we are displaying the best parameters, okay, which means that the best parameters that we can pass to our gradient boosting regressor and the best score that we got out of this right here. So it seems that the best parameters are these. So there must be at least a 0 0.1 of a learning rate, okay, and a depth of three, okay. And the number of estimators would b200 so we if you're not sure about this we can just run this again okay normally uh, we can just give it an epochs and it will run it multiple times but in this case let's just do it like this so it's going to take it a while to run through all these things then uh, by using this it's it actually saves us a lot of time to search for the best parameters that we can do all right, it seems that this time it took 250, right? So you can just do this over and over again until you find the best uh, parameters that you want and that you need with the best accuracy score. So right here, this is our gradient boosting algorithm right here. Basically, it's uh, as Dr. Rang explained, it's just um, we are defining the number of models, okay? It can be anything. It can it can be anything, not necessarily uh, decision trees. But in this case, um, we are, are using decision trees. So uh, we are defining the number of decision trees here, and it's just going to iterate through everything. Uh, it's going to do all these iterations and compare the residues. Uh, sorry, the residuals of each of the each model and sum it all up. Okay, basically. Then after that, so this gradient boosting. So let's take a look at the pros and cons listed in this notebook. So basically, as I've told you all before, it's going to correct the mis mistakes of the weak classifiers, and it's going to improve the overall accuracy by combining the weak learners. So it gives um, better accuracy, as shown in the pre uh, as shown in the theory session earlier. Uh, it's best to use in tabular or business data. It's not necessarily effective against images, okay? But it's best in case of tabular data, more so than deep learning. And then there is also cons. So as you increase all these parameters, okay? As you increase all these parameters, the space, uh, the space that it takes and the time will increase that much as well. And other thing is the hyperparameter tuning. So this isn't a big surprise. This is. Yeah, this is this is a trial and error for a, um, every model, for almost every model that is out there. So we have to be di diligent and find the best parameters that we need uh, to train our model, or else your model is going to give us very weird answers. Okay, so that is our very simple use case by using the uh, gradient boost regression algorithm. It's pretty simple. We are just loading everything and training the model directly. And also, we are also uh, tuning. We are also learning how to tune the parameters. So uh, let let me just show you show everyone. Okay, so I have installed a a couple of uh, GBMs right here. So uh, just now we have mentioned um, different uh, GBMs developed by different people. So in this case, I am going to compare three of them. So the three of them is CatBoost, XGBoost, which is um, very very much used in Kaggle, Kaggle, um, Kaggle hackathons, yes, and then Light GBM, which is developed by Microsoft. All right, so um, we have already, I have already installed it in my computer. So if you all want to follow, you can just do pip install this. All right then after that, okay. So before I move on, do you all have any questions regarding the simple use case by using the Boston Hub, Boston dataset? Does anyone have any questions? No? 
just making sure before I move on. Okay, it seems not. All right, then I will continue. So right here, we are just going to compare three algorithms. One is CatBoost, XGBoost, and LightGBM. So let's just import everything. So I have, currently I have a data set on my computer. I'm just importing it. So this right here. All right. So uh, let's just run. So this is our data. So we have a country, a year, status, and life expectancy. Okay, so it seems that this is the, um, yeah. It seems that this is the year of people. Yeah. And then after that, okay, we can just um, run this. So basically this in this first cell, we are running cat boost, as you can see right here. From cat boost, the library, import cat boost regressor. So this right here, um, as you all know, uh, this is pretty simple. We're just splitting the data and training the data again. And then here um, we are doing something different. So we're keeping track of the time that the thing that the thing execute trains the data right here, start time and end time. So this is going to be important so that we can um, look at the specs of this. Then after that, we are getting the R squared, the R squared values, and then the, so we have all these. Now we, now that we have understood the code, we are just, uh, let me just recap this. We are just uh, defining a start time. And then we're getting our cat boost regressor right here with 100, 100 iterations and a max depth of two, which we have already covered in the last example. Then after that, we're fitting the model, predicting, and we are getting the R square values, which is basically the errors. And after that, we are getting the end time. Now after that, uh, after we get the start and end time, right? We're going to find the difference between that which is going to be a period, which uh, it executes our, it executes and fits our model. Then after that, we are just going to print that different, uh, this diff variable. And if we just do that. Okay, we can see all the iterations right here printed out. Here we can just skip to the very bottom. So here we can see R squared for cat boost is pretty high 88. Right, and the execution time, it seems that it took uh, one, one second and a bit more. I think it's because um, I'm in a meeting right now. Previously, when I tested this, it only took about, it took a bit less than a second. Okay, but if you test it out without in a meeting, the ratio should be the same with each of these. So next, uh, we can just get the XG boost, okay, right here. So we are getting all, uh, first we are converting everything into something that we can actually use for our model, splitting the data. Okay, now that we have converted everything, we're splitting the data and we are fitting the model and predicting it and testing it. And then we can just do the same for this. Okay, XG boost. Okay, this is okay. All right, so here we can see a significant difference. Right here, this is cat boost 0 0.88 at, uh, R square. And then the, an execution time of over one second. And here we can see 90, uh, 0 0.97, which is very high compared to that. And an execution of time of 0 0.1 seconds, okay. And then let's try out light GBM. The process is, almost the same. Okay, this is also, this can be compared with extra boost. Okay, All right, so we have an accurate, uh, sorry, an R square value of 0 0.97 and execution time of 0 0.1. Okay, so this is a practical comparison between these three algorithms. Okay, previously we just showed you a bunch of numbers in the theory sessions, but now that you have run this, uh, now that you have seen it run, you should be able to gauge the capability of these of these different algorithms. So uh, people tend to use XGBoost more, this one, okay? And LightGBM, it came out quite recently. I think it's been two years since it came out. Yeah, so it's quite recent, but it's pretty efficient as you can see right here. 
All right, so, so uh, this is the comparisons between these three algorithms so that you can get an idea what are the algorithms out there and what are people using. Okay. So this one right here is just, um, it's almost the same thing, okay? In this case, we are using different types of models, okay? So this is also almost the same right here. Okay, let me just import everything first, okay? Right here. So uh, we are importing the XG boost model and, and the scikit-learn models, the linear regression and the uh, KNN classifier. Okay, so unsupervised learning. All right, then after that, we have, uh, we are loading our data and putting it in a data frame. It's this big, 700 rows, then splitting the data and training them. So here, uh, basically, we are using a for loop to run our model. We're storing everything in an array or a list inside of Python. And then by using the time module, we will be able to get the start and end time somewhere. It should be somewhere. Okay, so uh, by using this, we, we can get the differences right here. We have already run this. Let me just run this once more. Okay, pretty quick. Logistic regression, it took about 0.03. KNN, it took about 0 .0, 0 0.01 and a, su a support vector machine took about this much. So, and then the accuracy, so we can just observe the accuracy right here. Logistic regression, to, it has an accuracy of 77% and XG boost has an um, accuracy of 78. Okay, so we have all of these. So sorry. Okay, so this is the um, comparisons between all these different models. Okay, so uh, that is the hands-on session that I would like to um, demonstrate for today. So I will be passing on back to Dr. Ram. Thank you, Srijit. So. Where to go? Okay. Okay. So basically, uh, it's all about the mechanical process, but uh, at the nutshell, uh, for any tabular data, uh, gradient boosting uh, um, machines or uh, random forest will be, works fine with that. And with a small, small amount of the data and uh, this thing, a normal linear regression is quite good. For big data kind of things, still you need to do from some kind of feature engineering and uh, uh, dimensionality reduction, such kind of thing, still linear regression can hold good depending on the context. And also for the vision and also voice recognition kind of things, you, you, you as per the current uh, uh, industry standard, we are all using the deep learning model, models. Okay. And... Uh, I have to share one more slide. Basically, it's the okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Uh, everyone, this session is open for some questions. Should you have questions, please post to the speaker. Yeah. So, uh, before going there, right, actually, it's the process. 
as being a data scientist, you need to possess the domain knowledge and data cleaning things, and also the communication skills, and also to apply that one to the different stakeholders to discuss and also take that inputs and prepare your uh, model. The model preparation is only the one piece. There are total seven, uh, seven areas you need to focus and where you need to engage with this thing uh, as like a hand in hand approach where you need to take to the deployment so model development and also deploy this model into the real time and whereby take the feedback from the customer who is really consuming your model once the data changes the old model cannot fit for you okay got it and Gradient boosting method is using the kind of thing and whereby you need to, you, you, you summing the different uh, uh, models in a sequentially uh, versus the other uh, mechanisms. That's where it is uh, avoiding the overfitting and also approaching to the thing with the uh, learning, learning like what we use uh, uh, point one, learning rate. So it, that is the main uh, thing in the uh, gradient boosting machines algorithm. It uses the gradient descent uh, principle. Any other questions? Are we in at par with the timing? Yes, I think on dot. <laughs> okay. If you want any other questions, you can reach me, uh, Jatin Darji or uh, Professor uh, Vandana. Uh, there is some small typo in the slide. Thank you. Um, okay, I believe uh, there are no questions, but should you have anything, please feel free to ask or to post it on the chat box. Yeah. So students are able to access to the chat, right? They do. Oh, okay. I'll just give them a minute, maybe if they are no, uh, no problem. So now all these people will move to the third year or uh, second year, means uh, sixth semester. Correct. Okay. Uh, Prof. Uh, the feedback form, uh, please also share to me uh, so that uh, we also can check sure. with what are the other uh, Sure, expectation sir. from the students to improve ourselves. Sure, sir. I'll keep that in mind. Um, okay. I believe there are no questions for the session. Um, thank you very much, sir. On behalf of the Department of Engineering, AIML, NCS, Jane Group thank of you. Institutions, powered by Futurins, I thank Dr. Venkat Ramana and your colleague also for expending your valuable time and effort into this talk today. Um, along with this, I also like to thank our HOD, Dr. Vivek. He gave us this opportunity um, to gain some insight from you. Um, I'm not forgetting, I extend my thanks to all the students for making this on a for making up to this on a Saturday evening. Um, my pleasure having you with us, sir. Uh, before all of you log off, uh, students, just a reminder, please make it a point to fill up the survey form that is posted in the chat box. It will help us. Yeah, please do. Yes. Um, I you have some thanks coming in, sir. That's it. Oh. Thank you very much, sir. And students, I'm reminding again, please do not forget the feedback. Thank you for having a happy weekend. <laughs>